My name is uh, Thelma Dorothy Coyne Long. That's my full name. And I was born on the 14th of October, 1918. Well, I began to play tennis at the age of 12. Uh, fortunately, I seemed to be good enough that even when I was playing in the juniors, I was also good enough to play in the senior events. So that's how I became uh, playing 16 and 17 years of age. I was playing in the senior events. At the same, about the same time, um, another, uh, my doubles partner really, nearly th all through my career, Nancy Wynn, as she was then, Nancy Wynn Bolton, was also <clears throat> a very good player and a very good junior in Victoria. It was talked about since, I think, 35, 36, that a women's team would go overseas because one, a women's team hadn't been sent, that is by an Australian tennis body anyway, since the early 20s. I think it was about 1924, 25. But nothing had happened since then. And there was some talk that uh, uh, a, a women's team should be sent, mainly because uh, Nancy and myself were showing promise. Uh, the Australian Association decided to send a team overseas, so they sent four ladies. It was Nancy Bolton and myself and Dorothy Stevenson and Mrs. Harry Hopman, Nell Hopman, who was Harry Hopman's wife and Harry of course was the uh, manager of the Australian Davis Cup team at that time. We were all very excited in February 1938 when we left by ship for England. And those times even right up until the 1950s we travelled by ship because uh, uh, there was, there was no, no travel in 38 very much over long distances. Uh, the, the men went overseas and played Davis Cup and they were trained but we just had to rely on playing ourselves and doing what we could to do some training. But on the ship we used to get up each morning and do exercises or run round the decks or find <clears throat> perhaps a wall or something of the sort that we could bang the ball <laughs> up against anyway. And <clears throat> then of course on the uh, way to England, we would make a stop at uh, all our, our own ports, such as uh, Perth or Fremantle in West Australia, and then again at Colombo, and uh, at least get off and have a, have a game and a, a hit then. But um, by and large, we just more or less had to manage it. It was a six weeks trip to England, so... <laughs> So it uh, was, was not easy to keep your form up. By the time we arrived at England, well, we certainly needed two or three tournaments to more or less to get going again. And, most, and those we played in England or the British Hardcore Championships in Bournemouth. They were our early tournaments. And playing at Wimbledon, of course, the first time for all of us was a, uh, it was a real experience because when you take up tennis, you hopefully think, well, you might eventually get to Wimbledon and play there. Well, I, I thought the team generally was very successful, considering it was the first time we'd even played overseas. Mm. The first time that we'd played uh, at Wimbledon at all. I mean, I, I don't think you can ever go, say, go to Wimbledon and the first, <laughs> and the first time be expected to win it. We lost only to the winners of the ladies doubles in Wimbledon, that was uh, Alice Marble and Sarah Fabian. And we, we lost to them in the quarterfinals and they were the winners of the tournament. So uh, I think I lost to Hilda Sperling in the singles, but I got through three rounds of Wimbledon to reach her. And she, she lost oh, two long advantage sets against Helen Moody, who won the 1938 women's single. So she, she was an excellent tennis player, Hilda Spurney, and a cross-country runner, and I felt as though I was running cross-country when I played, and I tell you, every ball came back. <laughs> and all told, I think the whole trip 
we lost £4,000 and we never heard the end of it. You know, in the papers, or they, they say, thinking about women's tours and this, you know, so, so much was lost. They never ever said how much was lost on the Davis Cup trips. <laughs> So women didn't get a look in, and th this was more or less uh, the same in, in in the general community. <laughs> I mean, uh, men men came first, and women came afterwards, sort of thing. We were really something like second-class citizens, you know. You, you you got some sort of a job, and then you got married, and then you had children, and then you looked after the children and the kitchen sink and that was it. <laughs> well, women weren't supposed to, I don't think, uh, uh, excel at sport. I mean, if they did, it was you know, very, very notable. We were supposed to make a trip, that is, with a mixed team to South Africa in 1939. And of course, you know what happened in 1939? A war was declared. In my, in my case, I, when I went overseas in 1938, I was 19. Well, then war came, so what I missed out in going overseas was virtually a whole decade. During wartime, I didn't touch a record at all. Playing in those tournaments, I met uh, an awful lot of people who are, many of them are still my friends, and it was a great, exhilarating experience. Tennis as a sport has been a tremendous satisfaction and has meant a lot to me and has meant a lot to my life.